Thanks very much for coming. Well, thanks for inviting me. Oh, no, very nice to have you here. You know, I was, uh, I was reading this, this big article on you today. I, I was familiar with some of your work, but I was reading more on you for this interview. And the first thing that surprised me is that the way you got into this whole thing uh, years ago was not, didn't seem like a very conventional route at all. It's not like you had a, there was a degree in studying chimpanzees that you had and that led to you going to Africa. It was very unusual. Why don't, why don't you tell us about that to yeah, start well, with? Yeah, it really was. It was a backdoor sort of way, but apparently when I was one year old, I loved anything to do with animals, insects, you know. And then I began reading books, always books about animals. And I mm -hmm. read about Dr. Doolittle. Then I read about Tarzan, and you know, Tarzan has this wife, Jane, and I was so jealous of Jane. I thought she was a wimp, and I thought I'd have been a much better mate for Tarzan myself. Uh -huh. And that was when I decided to go to Africa to live with animals and learn about them and write books about them. Mm -hmm. And all my mother's friends said, why don't you tell Jane to do something, to dream about something she can actually do? And my mother used to say to me, Jane, if you really want to do something and you really work hard enough, and you never give up, mm -hmm. and you take advantage of opportunity, you will find a way. So I did all kinds of things and got a great job in London with documentary films, mm -hmm. but um, it didn't give much money. And when I got invited to Kenya, I threw in my job, worked as a waitress till I had enough money saved up, went to Africa, met the famous anthropologist, paleontologist, Louis Leakey, mm -hmm. worked for him because I could answer all his questions about animals. He was very impressed. And he's the one who gave me the opportunity to go and live with chimpanzees. Now, when he first did it, that was very unconventional. <coughs> very. Right? Yeah. For a, for a, especially for a woman to mm -hmm. go into the jungle, you know, trying to live with chimpanzees. Yeah. And uh, you had to have a guide at first, right? They wouldn't let you go in they alone. They wouldn't let me go in alone because of one young English girl alone in the bush. So my mother came. The same <laughs> wonderful mother. She volunteered. That's a great mom. Oh, she's, she's oh, still. Oh, I'll go with you in the, the jungle. And it's her birthday today. Oh, oh, oh. It's her birthday Well, happy today. birthday, Mom. <laughs> Good for her. That's, very, that's fantastic. She went with you. Came with me for two months, three mm -hmm. months, and then they thought, well, okay, that she's crazy, but she's okay, so then Mom <laughs> could go back and get uh -huh. on with her life. It's a good kind of crazy. It's a good kind of crazy. Now, uh, what I found interesting is that when you first started uh, to try and even get near the chimpanzees, they wouldn't let you near them. They were you know, terrified. They, they were terrified of you. A and white it actually skinned ape with weird bits of hair, you know, <laughs> I mean, oh, horrible. Uh, well, it took you how long? It took you how long to even get close enough where they would actually interact with you? It took, well, I didn't want to interact with them. I just wanted to get close enough to see them, see mm -hmm. what they were doing, you know? It took about 18 months before I could actually go up to all of them and know they wouldn't run away. But even from, from my peak in the 18 months with my binoculars, I still began to learn an awful lot about, you know, their movements and what they ate and how they w made nests at night in the trees. Because I would think 18 months, you, your spirits never, never sagged during that time. You thought, this is just taking too long well, to be accepted see, by them. Uh, no, because I still was learning fascinating things, even mm -hmm. though they were still scared of me. Mm -hmm. And uh, all I was worried about was that the money would run out before I saw some really exciting things, and then I'd have to give up. And also, mm -hmm. I'd be letting Louis Leakey down, which would have been horrendous. Mm -hmm. Now, one of the things that you saw that was really revolutionary is you noticed that the chimpanzees were using tools. Right. Is that right? Right. Uh, which, and at the time, people had said there's a distinction. You know, humans, we yeah. use tools, yeah. and that's what separates us from Correct. chimpanzees. Yeah, well, in fact, when I was at school, man the tool maker, that was it. That was what separated us from all the other non-human animals. Mm -hmm. And then, what, what did you see them do? I mean, we're not talking, they weren't like, using jackhammers. They were using something. They were using, well, actually, you say they weren't using jackhammers, but this, my chimps <laughs> used little pieces of grass uh -huh. and poke them into termite mounds, pull out the termites, and eat them off. And uh, they, they use tools in lots of other ways, but there are chimps in West Africa. Oh, there well, you have actually footage of it. That's it. There come the termites, and oh. uh, you eat them off. <laughs> That's what, so, they're, so they had to figure out, they figured out how to do it, and they passed this knowledge on. And they, the young ones watch, and they imitate. And all across Africa, mm -hmm. you find that chimps that are being studied have different tool-using cultures. And the ones in West Africa, not mm -hmm. a jackhammer, but they use big rocks that can weigh two kilos and an anvil on the forest floor, and they crack open these real hard nuts. That's it. 
Yeah, and and did you ever try any of this yourself? I oh, mean, I tried you, everything. Chips you, are much you didn't better eat the term termites. I did. I tasted everything. You ate the termites? Chimps. Yes, I tasted everything the chimps. <laughs> ate, but that's I, incredible I, uh, dedication. I, I, I killed it first, and they're much better fried. They taste you fried like, them? Have you tried to pass like, that knowledge back to the chimpanzees? Well, you really got to you know, fry these things. <laughs> and I, when I first came over to this country, you know, it was all me, Jay, and Utah then when I was interviewed, and there was this one heading in the paper which said, don't exterminate your termites, eat them. Jane Goodall does. <laughs> <laughs> which really must have helped your credibility. Absolutely. Ants are terrific. You've got to do it. What do they actually taste like, uh, termites? And when you fry them, they taste like those prawn little crispy things you have with cocktails, you know? Nice, they're good. Would and you ever nutritious. serve it at home, ever at a party? Um, I did uh, big flying ones like that. I have <laughs> served them, but I don't eat them anymore. <laughs> uh -huh. All right, well, you, you were away for a long time. You were uh, gone, initially you were gone for quite a long time. Mm -hmm. When you came back for the first time to civilization, that must have been a huge shock for mm. you because you've been uh, living in the, in the jungle so long. I know, I'm sure there were lots of things that shocked me. I think then as now probably the waste shocked me, but one thing that was a surprise is when I left England, everybody had hair like you, and when I got back, you know, in the early 60s, it had grown very long, and it was mm -hmm. kind of funny. That's I right. I didn't know what sex people were. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was confusing. Well. Some of us are back to this now. I'm, I have a like sort of a mid fifties thing going here. Yeah, right. But, uh, but so, but you 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 got you adjusted to it, and uh, I, I was I was curious because I noticed I watched uh, some of uh, some of the documentary today, and and the thing that struck me is you said you learned so much about the chimps when you were studying them. But one of the things that really struck you was that uh, and saddened you was that like humans they're similar and that they do attack each other and they mm -hmm. do try and. They, they attack each other and kill each other at times, they, is that yeah, true? They, they are very aggressively territorial. They're very hostile to strangers, and the, the males will actually go on patrols around the boundary of their territory, and if they see uh, one or perhaps two of the neighboring community, they'll chase, attack, and, if, and, and they may leave the victim to die of wounds inflicted. Mm -hmm. It's very brutal. It's very different from attacks within a community. It's funny because people have this sense that, that that chimpanzees wouldn't do that, that they're very, you know, loving and that they would, uh, you know, that they would never be brutal in any mm. way. They, sh they, they differ genetically from us by only just over 1%. Mm -hmm. Their brain is more like ours than any other living creature. It isn't surprising that in their behavior, mm -hmm. their emotions, their intellect, they're like us. Well, I, I think that's what's, what's so funny is that people are so desperate you know, throughout the ages to say, we're nothing like chimps, right. we're nothing like, they have, it's like we have this aversion to we're think we're, we're anything like them. What's so wrong, you know, really? Well, see, people didn't understand chimps, for one thing, and the one thing I've learned, perhaps more than anything else after 35 years, is humility. We are not as different from the rest of the animals as we used to think. Mm -hmm. We are different, we are unique, and what's the thing that I think makes us most different? We have a spoken language. We can have a show like this, we can have people listening. And that's something that this no is man's great really claim to fame. <laughs> yeah. <but laughs> it, oh my God! <laughs> you've done it. <laughs> the talk show. <laughs> yes, chimps have tools too, but we can put talk shows on with giant fake ostriches. All right. <laughs> well, uh, I, it is very nice uh, meeting you. I want to make sure I mention that National Geographic 30th anniversary special is tomorrow at eight o'clock on NBC, and and people should. Uh, Check that out. It was very nice having you on the show. Thanks for taking the time. Thank you. Jane Goodall, everyone.